In light of today's headlines featuring Home Affairs Secretary Michael Pizzullo, how do we ensure that Australia's intelligence and security interests remain free from political interference? What measures can government and public servants take to ensure that the Australian Public Service Code of Conduct is strongly upheld at all levels? Peter Khalil, I might start with you then. Thanks, Patricia. A very good question, Saga. I actually spoke to the Home Affairs Minister, Claire O'Neill, this morning, and she informed me that uh, there was a decision made to ask the Secretary to stand aside uh, and also uh, referred an investigation to the Australian Public Service Commission. Um, and that was also backed in, obviously, by the Prime Minister who spoke about it. There's a real uh, need there to act swiftly obviously with such serious allegations in the, in the reporting we've seen over the weekend. And the reason for that is partly what, to you, what you alluded to. Impartiality, uh, non-partisan advice, apolitical advice, these are fundamental principles of a good public service. And so anything that threatens that needs to be uh, acted on very, very swiftly, and that's what they've done. Uh, I think I, I saw also the Prime Minister was very keen on expediting that investigation and having those findings uh, uh, be brought forward so that they can make a decision on that. So that's, that's really important that they've taken that action today. Mm. George Brandis has written that no minister, Labor or Liberal, could trust him again. Do you agree? Could you well, trust him? This is a decision f for the government, for the Prime Minister and the Home Affairs Minister, with respect to that particular individual. I'd, la I'd let the Australian Public Service Commission run its course because, as Saga alluded to, they will be looking at the, any breaches of the Australian uh, Public Service Code. OK, uh, but we've seen the text messages. They're really explicit. It's, it's, like, it's not confusing what's going on well, here. Do the, you think it's appropriate? Then the findings will be, will, will, will be decided Can you by, see how by the uh, Public Service Commission. Defended? I, I think it's important, though, Patricia, that we, we're the adults in the room. We conduct a proper investigation. We let the Public Service Commissioner hand down the findings to the Prime Minister and to, to the uh, Home Affairs Minister and for the government to make that decision on that basis. There's proper processes here and we're going to do that. That's partly why I was talking about the importance of the public service, the separation of powers, the role and responsibility of public servants versus uh, the executive. I was a former public servant myself. Would I you have done this? Public service. Well, I was taught to give frank and fearless advice and give apolitical... Uh, and impartial advice to the government of the day in the, in the nation's Was best interest. Was this apolitical? Well, I'm not going to make a judgement. I'm going to let the Public Service Commission make that judgement. I think that's important that they, those findings are handed down. Um, I think it's important that the government acted very, very swiftly this morning to, to uh, take that action. Uh, Senator Paul Scar, do you think he can really survive this? Well, I think there is a process, PK, that has to be respected. So I think it was absolutely appropriate that he has stood down for the duration of the inquiry, and I agree with Peter. I think it's very important that the inquiry is expedited. And we're talking about a very important department here, the Department of Home Affairs. So I think it's absolutely vital that this process go through to a conclusion as soon as possible and there's some certainty for the department in terms of its future leadership. Is this the right process, Larissa? I think it's important for there to be an inquiry, but if you look at our politics right now and think about Australian voters and how much our confidence in democratic institutions is being undermined, it's so important to see that there is action taken, but also overwhelmingly people believe that there are interests, whether it's from the far right or, or corporate interests, having control of our democratic institution. The Department of Home Affairs, you know, there was so much worry about creating this super portfolio, like giving a Peter Dutton the Ministry for everything with guns. And now you have all of these text messages, these kind of things that people believe is happening in our politics is right there for people to see. So we're talking about how we have faith in these institutions and that goes to the amount of mis- and disinformation in responses like COVID. There are so many different things to see the impact, but we need to get rid of him. I, I don't see how he can, can maintain a, a place in public Tom, service. Tom, do you think he can stay? No, no, he won't survive. I mean, look, the public service, you know, they, they never absolutely get rid of their own, like they'll end up at, a, I don't know, in Antarctica or somewhere like that. <laughs> but, uh, He's look, paid a lot more than the Prime Minister. Well, he is, but, but that just makes it a whole lot worse. I mean, as, as, you know, as we heard before, you've got to be frank and fearless. I, I did a degree that was supposed to train public servants. I mean, thank God I never became one. But, um, you know, the, the idea was you would serve whatever government there was of the day and you had to do that to the best of your ability. And not that you can ever put your personal bias completely to one side, but you had to keep it in the background. And that's clearly not, not what's happened here. So he's gone. Are you surprised he hasn't just resigned? Well, I am, and I suspect he probably will. But, you know, the, the lure of 
you know, whatever pension he's owed and that sort of thing might sort of keep him going. But uh, I, I would, it wouldn't surprise me if by the end of the week he's decided to step down. Right. To, to spend more time with his family. <laughs> oh, <I've... laughs> of course.